Hi everyone, I'm Shelly Whedon and here to talk today to you about hyperhidrosis. I am a physician assistant and will be practicing at the new Lewiston location, which I'm very excited about. I have been treating hyperhidrosis for many years. That is a condition of excessive sweating and it affects many, many people. It most commonly is located um, on the scalp, face, underarms, palms of the hands and soles of the feet. This can affect patients very physically and psychologically. It can affect their performance at work if they have dripping or sweating of the hands and excessive sweating of the axilla. It can also affect them psychologically causing embarrassment um, if they have excessive dripping or have to change their clothes frequently throughout the day. I have seen many patients that can only wear black clothing because they have so much sweating of the underarms. The causes of this, we still don't really know, but we do think there is a genetic component to it as many family members also suffer from this. And it tends to occur in adolescence, but it can occur at any time. There's primary hyperhidrosis, which is in adolescence, which again is genetic. And there's also secondary hyperhidrosis, which may be due to a medical condition such as diabetes or a thyroid disorder. It also can be related to a medication you may be taking. So that's very important to discuss with your primary care physician or your dermatologist to see if this could be caused by a medication. The good news is there is treatment. Now, when we see a patient with hyperhidrosis, we first would like to start with topical treatments, which can be effective. Antiperspirants and deodorants can be very helpful, as well as topical dry sol or aluminum sulfate, which can help clog the pore and help clog the sweat gland. This can be very irritating to the skin and not be very effective for many patients. The other options um, are oral medications. We try glycopyrrolate or oxybutyn, and that can shut down the sweat glands, but it also will shut down all the sweat glands, which is not ideal when you're trying to vocally um, stop the sweating in the palms of the hands or the axilla. This can be dangerous in an athlete or someone who works in a very um, high temperature location where they do need to sweat to cool down. But we do monitor this very closely and the medications can be very effective. In our practice, we will treat with Botox injections. This is very effective and can give a patient a lot of relief and actually be life-changing. We will inject the Botox to the areas that are causing them distress, such as the underarms or the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. I have even injected scalps when someone has excessive sweating of the scalp with dripping, and it has been extremely effective. It is minimally invasive, and we would inject small amounts of the medication into the area. It takes about 10 minutes and can last about three to four months. Some patients, it lasts up to a year. It's very patient dependent and very different for everybody. Um, the side effects are very minimal and usually insurances will cover this, which is the great news. And it's, like I said, it's life-changing for many. And we do offer this at AP Dermatology. Um, other treatment options which are can also be effective are ionotophoresis, where you would get a device and place your hands. This is great for palmar hyperhidrosis, where you place your hand into a shallow um, bin of water and an electric current can block the sweat gland of the palms. This is a device that we would need to get coverage from your insurance, and sometimes that is not as effective as what I've seen with the Botox treatments. There's also a handheld device called Mirror Dry, which can be effective for the axilla. Um, but again, Botox is also extremely effective to this area. So I would 
be thrilled to take care of you if you do suffer from this. And please call AP Dermatology and schedule your appointment and consultation. And we would be happy to take care of you. Thank you so much. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I do see a question coming up. Can this be used on children or teenagers? That is a great question. So the FDA approves Brotox for 18 and under. However, I have written letters of, I have seen young children, children say 14, 16 years old who have severe Palmer hyperhidrosis. Um, some can't hold a baseball bat or have trouble holding a pencil at school and we will write letters and some insurances will then approve it. And it is very safe. There are no side effects. It is a very safe medication to give. So yes, if we, some insurances will approve it, but they do like to say it's over 18 and older, but I have gotten it approved for under 18. Yes, that's a great question. Here's a question. Should folks see their pediatrician or primary care physician before seeking treatment via a dermatologist? Yes, it's always important to um, first talk to your primary care physician. Um, like I said, it could be a medical condition um, such as diabetes or a thyroid disorder or a medication. And that's always great to discuss with your primary care physician first. Um, they can also prescribe Drysol, which is that topical uh, medication, which can sometimes be very effective. Let me also add, there's a new topical pad called Cubexa pads. This also could um, be helpful if someone did not want to go forward with the um, injections. Um, that's also, I found in pediatric cases, this has been very effective as well. So um, again, yes, it would be great to first start with your pediatrician and your primary care physician, and then come to see us if you're still having the effects of this. So I think that was the last question. Um, how often do you have to get injections? Um, generally, it's every four to six months. Um, I find that it does last and it's very effective for four to six months. And I have found that as most of the patients that do come in are adolescents, teenagers, young 20s. But after that, it does tend to improve after that. So, but two, three times a year is generally how many times I've been taking care of patients with this. And yes, here's another question. Does insurance cover? Um, yes, they do. Most insurances have no problem covering this because they do understand the effects this does have and how effective the treatment is. And again, just come in for a consultation and we will take care of that part of that prior authorization with your insurance company. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you, everybody.